learning about the basics of how tropical storms form and how global atmospheric circulation works can be really tricky if you haven't quite mastered the basic concepts. So, number one basic concept to always remember is that warm air always rises. Whenever warm air rises, it goes high into the atmosphere and it's cold. And because that warm air that's risen has carried water vapour with it, it reaches a cold surface, creates a cloud, and then falls as rain. And that is going to happen whenever a warm surface is heated, okay? And low pressure is created. So here's a little demonstration. Here is a clean, dry glass and a kettle. And this kettle is going to simulate um, the ocean being warmed, which is what would happen in a tropical storm. And this is going to simulate what's happening high in the atmosphere. This is the top of the atmosphere, where it's really cold. And I'm gonna create rain inside this glass, just to prove that whenever warm air rises, hits a cold surface, rain follows. So I'll turn on the, turn on the ocean, uh, and it's starting to warm up. To create a tropical storm, it doesn't need to be very hot, just 26 degrees Celsius. Warm air is rising. Okay, it's reaching high up into the atmosphere, it's cooling, and as a result of cooling, it's creating rain. And my glass, which was totally clean and dry, is now falling with rain. Okay? So the same principle applies to the formation of tropical storms, but with the added layer that once that precipitation and storm has formed, it starts spinning and it spins because the earth spins, and also because the trade winds that meet at the equator cause the spin to start moving either in a clockwise or in an anti-clockwise direction. <clears throat> so here we've got a tropical storm forming. The ocean is warmed to at least 26 degrees Celsius, which happens at the equator. The warm air starts to rise, cools, condenses, and creates clouds and this forms a tropical depression. It starts spinning due to the spinning of the earth and moves towards land. So a little bit more about the spinning that I mentioned. So here's the world and it spins like this. Okay, 24 hours to do a whole spin. And when the earth is spinning like this, if you look at the Northern Hemisphere, okay, that is spinning anti-clockwise, okay? Still turning it the same way. That's spinning anti-clockwise. Now if I keep the Earth spinning, and you look at the Southern Hemisphere, all right, that is clockwise. Still spinning the same way, I'm not changing anything. Oh, that is anti-clockwise, okay? So that's why in the Northern Hemisphere, tropical storms start spinning anti-clockwise. But in the Southern Hemisphere, Tropical storms spin clockwise. So here is our fully formed tropical storm and you can see that the warm air is rising at the ocean surface that creates low pressure. It rises up and as it rises up, it creates these huge spiraling rain bands and either side of the eye is the eye wall and the eye wall is where the most intense conditions are felt but in the eye in the centre of the tropical storm is descending air, which means that's high pressure because the air is sinking and inside the eye, it is calm. But the eye wall is where the strongest conditions are felt. You could get an exam question asking you to forecast the weather for a particular area using an image. So if we were asked to forecast the weather for New Orleans over the next 24 hours, you would say that as the tropical storm approaches, there'll be low pressure. This will lead to extreme rainfall and very high winds, up to 100 kilometers an hour. Accompanies with this, there'll be storm surges and high levels of flooding. As the eye passes over, there'll be a brief calm period of high pressure, but then low pressure will return 
and there'll be extreme rainfall and high winds.